Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Guys, I got a real bad feeling about what's about to happen. If you want to know what's going to happen next, look no further than the past. The problem is, is that we've become so desensitized to this doom scrolling 24-7, day in and day out, that we've become normalized to our situation as it is today, forgetting that 13 months ago, the world was an entirely different place. In order to truly appreciate the magnitude of the escalation in geopolitical tension that's happened around the world in just the last year, you really have to chronicle all the events on a timeline to get some perspective. Because for most people, they're already normalized to this Cold War mentality between China, Russia, the United States. They've become normalized to the specter of nuclear war looming overhead. And already, people are adapted to this and the normalcy bias has kicked in and they already think that there's nothing to worry about and, you know, just go back to life as usual. Well, you know what I'm here to do? Daily dose of doom and gloom. Let me put it in perspective for you. What has happened in the last year? So you can understand the sheer magnitude of the escalation of events that has happened. Again, it doesn't happen overnight like it does in the movies, but boy, did it happen fast. Get a load of this. Back in February of 2022, what was everybody talking about? What was in the global headlines? Well, at least in our global headlines, it was the truckers' protest. It was our Canadian rendition of J6. And that was what everybody was talking about until it got demoted and took the backseat to the Russian invasion. That's when the world changed. We had sanctions put on Russia. They were taken off the SWIFT banking system. The United States started sending more and more weapons in the form of small arms, javelin missiles, stinger missiles, body armor, ammunition. Then Europe jumped on board. Of course, they had been doing this and preparing in some way, shape, or form since 2014, but it really ramped up back in February when Russia crossed that line. We started to have decoupling happen between the Russian and NATO economies and other developing economies around the world. Okay, businesses started to leave Russia. McDonald's left Russia. That was one of the most notable ones. You had a lot of other companies not want to do business, not want to buy gas, not want to buy oil from Russia anymore. We had the first use of hypersonic missiles. I believe it was a Zircon, possibly a Kinzhal missile that hit a mercenary base and woke up the West to the capabilities of the Russia, because at one point that was still hypothetical. It was still unknown as to whether Russia had that technology. Sure enough, they had it, and the mercenaries found out. Moving on into 2022, we had Kaliningrad Row. What that was is that the Russians have this territory outside their country that they can only access by rail, air, or sea. The Latvians, I believe, possibly the Lithuanians, and the Poles decided that the Russians could not traverse the Savalki Gap with any sort of equipment. They were going to put a blockade. That almost led to nuclear war in and of itself. People have already forgotten about that. Fortunately, they were able to come to some sort of arrangement that allowed the Russians to transport goods, but just not military equipment. Then the United States decided to send HIMARS. These were a short-range, offensive, precision-guided missile system that proved to be very effective. And the Ukrainians started to push back against the Russians. Okay, Europe began sending more weapons. Around this time, people started to get very concerned because they were worried that if Russia loses this war, it's going to go nuclear. Sure enough, in the United States around this time, you started to get these weird PSAs and a lot of talk about nuclear war likely from yours truly as well, of course, because, of course, we're doing the daily dose of doom and gloom. But nuclear war became a hot topic, and the New York PSA became the meme of 2022. You know, get inside, stay inside, wait for the government to tell you what to do. It was the laughing stock. It looked like it was made by some college computer science dropout. Anyways, around this time, the United States started to stockpile acute radiation sickness medication. Russia ordered 24-7 military production of weapons and equipment when they realized that the war was going to go on a lot longer. Right around this time, Nancy Pelosi decided to stimulate the conflict in the East by taking a trip. 
Right after she left, China did an exercise simulating a blockade of Taiwan. Around this time and up until this point, and pretty much up till now, we've had the Zaporozhia nuclear power plant scare because this was the first war in which a country that had nuclear power plants was engaged in a high intensity conflict. Never before happened. It just so happened to be the biggest nuclear power plant in Europe, which to this day, especially in the past week, is at a high risk of possible incident. At worst case, it's going to be a situation where they can't keep the, the spent cool rods and shit's going to hit the fan. Anyways, around that time, you had a mobilization of the Russian military, a partial mobilization, and a declaration of martial law around their new annexed territories. Five days later, we have the Nord Stream blast. Five days later. People forget the timeline of events here, okay? Then, right around, you know, about a, a few weeks later, that's when the air raids begin in Ukraine on a constant basis. General Armageddon takes over. He starts bombing the crap out of Ukrainian critical infrastructure, okay? Trying to put them out of business for the winter. Right around this time, the United States sends the 101st Airborne Division to Romania as an obvious gesture to the Russians that were watching, right? Then we had, because around that time, they started using a lot of Iranian drones and Iran was implicated in the conflict. Coincidentally, Iranian protests begin. They try to topple the government. It doesn't work. Around this time, weird things start happening in the nuclear sphere of things. You have a UK submarine, a nuclear submarine, in fact, catching fire. Allegedly on the same day, and this is just hearsay, but Rishi Sunak, the third prime minister of the year for the UK, because of course things were going so well in Europe throughout this time, that's sarcasm, just like they're going well right now in France. Anyways, he was rushed off, presumably to some bunker. Anyways, around this time, dirty bomb threats started to escalate. Nuclear dirty bomb threats. The Russians claimed they caught wind of a plan hatched by the Ukrainians to detonate a nuclear dirty bomb and blame it on the Russians. This prompted a call from the highest office in Russia, military, the uh, Ministry of Defense, Sergei Shoigu, to Lloyd Austin to try to defuse the situation. Nothing happened, thank God. Then we had the Polish missile incident. Remember when it was thought that the Russians had targeted a, a Polish wheat silo or something, killing two people? NATO almost invoked Article 4 and 5 when we thought that we were pretty much on the brink of nuclear war. Well, right around the same time, many people forget that Russia was deemed a terrorist state by the European Union. And, of course, right around this time, we started to sever all ties from economic ties with Russia. They put an oil price cap in. You know, many countries stopped buying Russian natural gas. Uh, there was more pipelines that were bombed and sabotaged. And, of course, right around this time, it was when Poland decided that they're going to be the next military superpower in Europe. So the floodgates to military equipment that have been ongoing up until that point, but started to intensify. And we're talking about the United States to Ukraine and to Poland. Then there was an attack on a nuclear base. The first time this ever happened. At this point, I thought, you know, we have to be at DEFCON 1. Thankfully, cooler heads prevailed. But Russia had a nuclear base targeted by a Ukrainian drone. At Engels Air Base, a Tu-95 nuclear-capable bomber was destroyed. Actually, it might have been two of them. Anyways, that prompted Russia to move its Tu-95 bomber fleet a little farther away from the front lines. Okay? Now, right around this time, shortly thereafter, the USA and Europe decided to send tanks. They agreed to send tanks. You guys remember that? And what else? Patriot Missile Defense System. All the while, throughout 2020 U, 2022, the central banks were quietly stock, stocking up on gold. Okay? And this is right around the time when the FDIC had that publicly accessible meeting where they're talking about how they're going to manage public panic in the case of a bank run. This is months ago. Okay? Then, 
out of nowhere, actually not out of nowhere, throughout this time, let me walk it back a little bit, Russia and other countries start prepping their nuclear fallout shelters and their bunkers. They start taking inventory, whether it's Switzerland, Poland, Russia in particular. And this is when the acts of sabotage started to ramp up behind Russian lines, when attacks on Russia started to really start to intensify, drone attacks week after week, whether it was on Crimea, Bryansk, close to Moscow even. And right around this time, a balloon incident happened where everybody was transfixed on these balloons that were suddenly up in the sky and coming over the United States. And all of a sudden, it was etched into people's minds, officially demarcating the beginning of the Cold War between China and the United States. Shortly thereafter, Russia ends the New START Treaty, which is the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, to try to limit the amount of nuclear weapons that both countries can have. But that's not all it does. It also severely impacts the communication between Russia and the United States, especially with respect to notifying each other of the whereabouts of various nuclear weapons, and it also opens the floodgates to nuclear testing, which is most definitely coming soon. We then had a claim that North Korea was sending artillery shells to the Russians because you know how the Russians have been running out of ammo for the last year? Yeah. And right around this time, you had the United States and South Korea intensifying their joint military drills. Some of these drills simulating an invasion of North Korea. Right around this time, the North Korean rhetoric really ratchets up. They start shooting off a missile every single day. They parade out what appeared to be dozens of nuclear-capable missiles. Remember, they only had one of those just a year ago. And all of a sudden now, today, they are officially testing out tactical nuclear missiles, possibly going to actually conduct a tactical nuclear test. They got really close the other day when they simulated a tactical nuclear airburst. Anyways, things intensify on the Korean Peninsula. Just not too long ago, U.S. staff were fired at a nuclear base over Minot, presumably the one that the balloon flew over. Many high-ranking officers. This was unprecedented, okay? Suddenly, the United States says, we got to change our nuclear doctrine to allow for a nuclear first strike. Remember now, we're still just a stone's throw away from the truckers' protest, okay? That prompts the Russians to say, okay, we're deploying the Satan II nuclear missiles now. Right, the biggest nuclear missile that the world has ever seen can hold the biggest nuke the world has ever seen. Oh, and actually, we're going to send our Poseidon nuclear missiles out to sea in the Belgorod, the first nuclear-powered nuclear torpedo the world has had ever seen. Okay, around this time, the Russians were exposed to a big hack. Yes, many millions of Russians uh, seen on their TV set a warning for them to go to the fallout shelters immediately because the nuclear bombs were inbound. Turned out to just be a cyber attack. Okay, right around that time, you had missile defense systems being deployed to Moscow. Not just the guns, that was a few weeks ago. Now we're talking S-400 in the heart of the city, okay? Then we have this off-the-cuff statement made by the Wagner Group official who had made some successful ground in Bakhmut, say that if you join us now, if you join my organization, my private mercenary organization now, you will have a fine seat at the table when World War III starts, okay? Remember, we're still just stones throw away from the truckers' protests. Then the Moldovan protests begin, and incidents begin to increase, and rumors about Ukraine possibly making a move on Transnistria, or the Russians making a move from Transnistria to Moldova. The Romanians move air defense towards Moldova in response to this. Poland decides to set up barricades between them and Belarus, now down to one working border crossing, border crossing between Belarus and setting up blockades between Kaliningrad and Belarus. All the while, the Ukrainians, of course, are mining the border between Belarus and Ukraine. 
Right around this time, Poland decides to send HIMARS missile systems near the Kaliningrad border, which is of great strategic significance to the Russians. It's one of their primary access points to the Baltic Sea and likely where they would deploy a hell of a lot of medium range nuclear missiles if push came to shove. Right around this time, there was a drone incident in the Black Sea. Oh, we're getting pretty recent now, aren't we? There was a drone incident which was, goes down in history, in Wikipedia history anyways, as the first engagement in the war between NATO and Russia with a drone, a RCQ or something like that, RQ-4 Reaper drone, I believe, that was taken down by Russian fighter pilots. All the while, we have record military exercises transpiring around Europe, okay? Namely in France, where they had the biggest military exercise ever. In France, the place that's burning down right now because there's not enough people to pay the taxes to keep pace with all the crazy inflation that's the result of, well, partly anyways, the war. Shortly thereafter, it came out that China was starting to mobilize or getting ready for mobilization across the Taiwan Strait, getting prepared for war. I think a U.S. general a couple months earlier had said something to the effect of we're going to be at war with China in 2025. Oh yeah, and I think I forgot about when the UK, the leader of the UK military, the top general there said, yeah, we got to prepare our boys to go to, to war with Russia. That was last summer. Anyway, sorry, we're going so far back in history, right? North Korea has begun daily launches now. Then of course we had the good old banking crisis just out of nowhere, right? Remember that whole FDIC thing? Now, on a daily basis, there's intercepts between nuclear bombers and fighter jets of either the Russian or United States sort. On a daily basis, whether it's in the Black Sea, whether it's in uh, around Alaska or Hawaii or Japan, it's pretty much on a daily basis for. Right around this time, we had the International Criminal Court issue an arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin. Okay, right around this time, Russia said, if you arrest Vladimir Putin, we will destroy your country with nuclear weapons. And right around this time, Xi Jinping goes to Moscow for a three-day visit, an unprecedented visit, and commits to uniting with Russia for a new world order. All the while, France continues to burn. I wonder what the outcome of that situation is going to be. Ukraine has said, well, I guess we can't negotiate with a war criminal. So negotiation is off the table. And in the next month, the, UN the UK for the first time is going to roll out their emergency alert system. And everybody is going to be terrified by the message they get on their cellular phone. But of course, it's just for tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes and all those things that you get on the United Kingdom island all the time, right? A little bit of sarcasm there. The point of that, guys, is to show you that this situation is intensifying. It is getting wildly out of control. But when you look at it from day to day, just like when you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't change too much. But then you look at pictures of yourself 10 years ago, and you're like, damn, I'm old. <laughs> you know? So uh, all I can say, my friends, keep on prepping. Keep on prepping and keep on hoping and praying if that's what you do to get you through the day. But just do not stop prepping because we've only just begun. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.